Hello, Spinthusiasts, and welcome to my office floor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build the awesome Spintronics Christmas flags that we use this year. And everything that I have here, I will put links to in the description. And if you would please, please, please use the links that we put there because whenever you make your purchases from those links, if, if they're from Amazon, then we actually get credit toward more purchases on Amazon for ourselves. So if you could use our links, that would be awesome. Um, any other company links that we have in our description of our videos, if you go to their website and you purchase something from them, if you would please let them know in your purchase that Spintronics sent you over there, that Spintronics recommended them. We have a lot of deals with companies where they give us credit to their company for recommending them to other people. And the thing with me is that I will not recommend something to you if I don't use it and love it myself. So please go do that. If I recommend something to you and you order something, please let that company know that Spintronics recommended them and that we are the people who are out there shouting out their names. So let's get started. So this is a one inch PVC pipe. It is clear PVC. It comes wrapped in plastic. You can buy them in six foot lengths, but there's about a $15 difference in the six foot length versus the five foot length. And I am not about to pay 15 extra dollars. I think these were $10 a piece. These were like nine something a piece. And we bought our whole set on Amazon. It's simply, like I said, clear PVC and they come in pre-cut lengths of five foot. If you buy the six foot ones, they're more expensive and it just has to do with them needing to fresh cut six feet length. The next thing you're gonna need is some fairy lights. These fairy lights come in packs of 12. And so I just bought a couple of 12 packs. They're super, super cheap. I don't even think these were like 25 cents per light. They're super cheap and they're super bright. Just kidding, I have to pull the tab out first. And like I said, they come in packs of 12 and you can get them on good deals too. I think I ended up doing like a buy one, get one free deal. So I bought one pack of 12 and I got another pack of 12 for free. And I didn't need that many. I only needed, I think we we're doing 14 flags this year. Now I'm gonna feed this into the pole from one end to the other. And actually, if you can, And I am gonna go the entire length of the pole. My first original idea was to not go the length of the pole, was just to go half the length of the pole because I figured the silk would cover up one end of it, but actually you can see the lights through the silk really well. And you wanna make sure that this is really straight, especially on the end. Otherwise the friction will make it like bend a lot more even. And these are a little bit longer. I wanna say these are like, seven feet long of strands. So they're gonna be longer than your pole for sure. And they're nice and straight, they're really easy to feed through. So I've got that fed through and you can see it, I'll check it again. Now once it's all the way in, there's a sort of a portion down here that doesn't have any light to it. So I'm just gonna put this in so the last light is here, just inside and then I'm gonna kinda, oh, is that the last light? Nope, here's the last light. And then I'm gonna kind of ball the rest of it up a little bit. And set this on the outside. So notice the switch is here on this side. I really wish if I had the option and I realized this at the time, I wish this would have been like a push button switch where you could just push this. But you have to be careful about where you tape the battery pack because if you are planning on doing tosses or anything like that and you hit this battery pack, you could lose all of your lights. And that's that's no fun. That's the whole point of having them is to have lights. These are rubber chair tips. I buy these in bulk on Amazon. So I just have like three giant boxes of these back in the back at Spintronics. And when you put it on, be careful how you put it on because you want some slack in your wire here because when you put it on, it's gonna push down over the wire. There we go. And then notice my battery pack's kind of hanging out. 
like so. I'm gonna take my red tape because I'm gonna put a red flag on this. And I really like when my tape matches my flag. And when I tape my tip, this, I don't have to worry about it so much flying off the end because there's no weight in here. So I'm just gonna tape the tip itself. I'm just gonna go over. I'm not gonna waste a lot of tape, like trying to tape onto the pole and stuff like that here. And then I'm gonna use my scissors. You don't have to use scissors when you're taping things. And I actually get comments about this a lot on our social media because they see we use scissors at Spintronics to cut tape. I have no problem ripping tape. I do it all the time. But when I'm taping a set of show flags, I really like my edges of my tape to be pretty and not bunched up. So I don't generally rip the tape. I will cut it instead. So it's a nice fine line. So you'll notice I'm putting, I'm gonna put three pieces of tape all going the same direction. So there's two. I'm gonna put one more going the same direction over the end. And this just gives it kind of a nice clean look instead of having the rubber showing at the bottom when you tape your tips. Now the reason I've got the battery pack where I do is because you want it to be accessible to turn on and off after you have the tip applied. I had a lot of people who were suggesting, oh, just shove the battery pack into the Hole, but then you can't you can't reach it once it's in there and you can't turn it on and off and you definitely want to be able to do that so now I'm gonna go around the tip starting with the wrinkles where I had to fold my three pieces on the end and then I'm gonna slowly work my way down down okay now I'm gonna leave my wire hanging pretty loose here and then wrap it there then I'm going to take my little battery pack, I'm going to fold it up just slightly so that the switch is really close to the tip. So you can kind of see where I'm holding it. It's not actually touching the rubber tip, but it's close to it. I just want to make sure it's close enough where the students can be performing and access the tip because I'm thinking we'll probably like start the choreography with the lights off, like go into right shoulder or something or go into a right slam and then turn the lights on and then turn the lights back off again at the end or something. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not even writing the choreography, but this should be a fun time. So I did, I don't like that I have to tape up the pole so far to get the battery pack to be taped down. But at the same time, if I were to put the battery pack like on the tip or something and like save some of the light, then you risk like bashing the battery pack whenever you toss it. And I don't want to do that. And I honestly, I don't know that we're going to be tossing because these battery packs, they even stick out a little bit more than the tip does. If I could have gotten a bigger rubber tip that's like wider, I might've done that, but I didn't want to spend any more money on the whole situation either. And I, like I said, the wire is longer than the pole. So I'm just going to kind of press it down in a little bit. If you have something you can press in with it, that's cool. If you want to fold over the end a little bit, I'm just going to fold the end over and tuck it back in on itself so we can get as much light as possible from the pole. Now I am going to put a weight in the top end. That way if we do want to do some nice little tosses and stuff, we can. I'm not going to tape this bolt. Now this is not a very big bolt. I think it's an inch and a half. No, I take that back. That's a three inch. Uh, so this is a three inch bolt. I'm not going to put any tape on the bolt itself. I am going to tape the tip down though and I'll show you a little trick because this isn't going to rattle around like it does inside of a metal pole so I'm not worried about it rattling and bashing up the metal pole and these tips are so perfectly tight on these poles and we're going to be using them so little compared to our normal poles I'm really not worried at all about taping the tip down if you just feel like you really need to tape the tip, the tape the bolt on the inside, that's fine. Just put like an X of tape over it, but uh, these are very tight tips. Ta-da. So now I've got my bolt inside and I've got my tip. And now I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to do the same situation that I did earlier where I 
put three pieces, but my pieces are gonna be longer because this is how I keep my bolts in. So I'm taping actually onto the pole and I go across and I come back down and I make sure that my tape is going to be on the pole. That way, if the bolt does get loose or the cap gets loose, the tip doesn't go flying off and hurt somebody. So when I when I actually do my round tape, I'm gonna tape over these, these pieces and it holds on so much better. It's kind of crazy. We did some experiments and found that it actually really holds better when you tape the tape, that first piece all the way onto the pole. And then the amount that it holds does not change significantly if these second and third pieces are down on there or not, it doesn't really change it much. So I just make them short just so I'm not wasting tape. So here's my third piece. So these are my three that go. So, so these are my three pieces that go across the end, just like I was showing you before. You can see my end is nice and covered. And like I said, I taped onto the pole for that first piece. Now I will take my tape once more and do the wrap around. Uh, the bolts I just get at a hardware store, your local hardware store should have them. They're called carriage bolts. And like I said, I'm using three inches in these. Our winter guard carriage bolts, I think are three inches in one end and an inch and a half in the other end. Uh, my outdoor flags are depending on the school I'm working with. Some of them are four inches and two inches and some of them are four inches on the bottom and five inches on the top or six inches. So it just depends on the, on what you're trying to do with them. So there I taped all the way down. I wrapped around, wrapped around, wrapped around and I taped down there. The next thing, everyone's favorite part is the silk. This is a solid lame silk from Band Shop. And it's just an in-stock flag. I didn't have time to order custom flags. I would have loved to get custom flags, but also I'm poor. So I just have a solid red lame silk. I got the curved ones. So notice I always want to make sure my curve is going down. So down and away. So this is my top. One of the things I like about Band Shop is they have a really big sleeve. And so even though I already put my tips on, I can just put this over the end. I also really like that they put both Velcro inside of the sleeve and they put a tab on the outside. Actually, let me flip this out and show you really quick. So you can see on the inside there, this is a piece of Velcro and then this is your tab. So you can do either one if you want. And if you want to cut your tabs off, I would cry if I ever had to cut my tabs off when I was on guard because I think tabs are awesome. But if you wanted to cut your tabs off and just use Velcro, you can, or if you wanted to, put a piece of Velcro on your pole, Velcro the silk to it, and then tape your tabs, that's perfectly okay too. So, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead, and so what I do is I start at the bottom where my tab and my silk meet, and that's where I put my first piece of tape. I'm gonna wrap around to the top, then I'm gonna take my tab, I'm gonna fold it over the tape there. I'm gonna keep wrapping, I'm gonna cover my tab there and then I'm gonna wrap all the way around to cover the rest of the tab. Very important to get that fold in there because that's actually what hooks the tab into the tape and makes sure that it doesn't come apart while you're performing. And then down here at the bottom, same thing again. There's a piece of Velcro inside, there's a tab on the outside. I didn't, I, I would, Normally love to have that extra reinforcement of having a piece of Velcro, but I did not go and get any Velcro. So I decided I'm just not even gonna worry about it this time. But that is really nice, especially for like your show flags or your practice flags. Okay, so again, I'm gonna start here where the silk and the tab meet. And then I'm gonna put a piece of tape there. I'm not taping on the silk, notice my silk is free. I'm gonna wrap it around a couple times here. I'll probably go three times around this one, just for a little extra reinforcement. And then I'm gonna fold my tab up, like so. So I've got it taped here. 
I just fold the tab up over the tape. I'm not getting any nasty tape sticky stuff on my silk. It's all gonna be on the tab and on the pole. And I don't have this big, long, nasty tab that's like halfway down the pole. And then, like I said, I'm gonna cut this. So I got my tape cut there. All right, and that is a beautiful flag for Christmas parade. Oh. <laughs> get it lit up and get it beautiful. I cannot wait to spin these. I can't wait for you guys to see these. Make sure you're watching the vlogs. If you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. If it is red, that means you're not subscribed. If it is gray, that means you are subscribed. So make sure you check that out. And yeah, it helps our team whenever you subscribe, anytime you watch any of our vlogs or our tutorials. And like I said, follow the links. If you wanna purchase any of this stuff, that helps our team too. Uh, let people, let companies like Band Shop know that we recommended them and you wanna help out our team. As always, like this video and share it with your friends. Color Guard is always so much more fun when you get to do it on a team.